You likely did not get this message from the government six days out from the start of Obamacare, but Senate aides did. They're being told they should delay enrollment in health insurance plans for now. That's where we are on the left, September 24th. That's where we will be next Tuesday on the right, when millions of Americans are being urged to buy health insurance from the new Obamacare exchanges starting next Tuesday. Terrific panel to talk about this. Republican Brad Wensrup is a physician who served in Iraq first, and now he's serving the U.S. House. Renee Elmers represents North Carolina. She is also a nurse. And Dr. Mark Siegel, part of our Fox News Medical A team. And good morning to all three of you. I, I, tell you I, I read about this stuff every day. It's our job to do. And I'm still massively confused. I can't imagine what Americans and businesses are going through. To the members of Congress first, who are members of the Doctors' Caucus as well, you both voted last week to defund Obamacare on Friday. To Congressman Wenstrup first, I will start with you. What are you so afraid of? I mean, what, what's coming our way soon? Well, one of the things I'm concerned of as a citizen is that we're not being treated equally under the law with special carve-outs, and the rule of law seems to be challenged here, too, and I have a concern with the IRS involved. But as a physician, Bill, I'm concerned that we approached this in the wrong way from the beginning. We should have been looking at who's uncared for in America, not just who's uninsured. The uninsured would fall under this. I'm afraid that we're creating a system that will still have many people uninsured, and we're increasing the number on Medicaid. Now, we like our safety nets, but unfortunately, we don't have the primary care doctors available to take care of them. Many don't take Medicaid. Studies have shown that. We're just driving more people to the emergency room, which is not the best form of care by any means. That's not the place you go to have your diabetes treated. Also concerned with the doctor-patient relationship being interrupted by structures such as the Independent Payment Advisory Board. Well, I, I tell you, Mark Siegel's been talking about that stuff for three years. Let me get to him in a moment. Renee Elmer's... You voted to defund Obamacare. What, what are you so afraid of? Well, this is a devastating piece of legislation. It's not only going to be <laughs> devastating to health care, as my colleague has pointed out, but also to the economy and the workforce. We've seen this over and over again. We actually have those on the left now, the unions, coming forward and talking about how devastating this will be. This is a bad piece of legislation, and unfortunately, it is law. It is a bad law, and we need to hit it with a strategy, and that's what we're trying to do. We in the House of Republicans are talking about defunding, delaying, dismantling, repealing, and replacing the whole plan. Okay, now, I, I don't know if you can do that or not. And perhaps, you know, that, that comes sooner, that comes down the road, or maybe that never happens. Um, but to Congressman Wenstrup again, what, what, what is your solution then? I mean, if you're stacked up against this law and you don't like it in the first place, what, what's, what, how do we dig ourselves out of a corner? What would you recommend? Well, I think the American people are, are wanting some changes in reforms, and the House of Representatives have brought that forward. Representative Elmers can talk to you about the proposal that she just put out with the American Health Care Reform Act. But also, we need more health centers that can provide primary care, and we need to drive more doctors to become primary care physicians, particularly in rural areas. I was at an event at Harvard, and they said, Marcus Welby's gone. Well, get out to my rural areas. They need Marcus Welby. Are, are you we saying need more this health law, centers. so this law won't do that, right? It, 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 it will make it less? less. We, we, need, we need more like federally qualified health centers or health centers associated with emergency rooms to drive people into primary care will they get treated pr appropriately and can get preventative care as well. And I think that's important if we're really going to improve our health care system. In addition to the reforms that we have on the table, such as tax reform, so that individuals can write off their health care insurance, HSAs, which allow people to pay with pre-tax dollars for their health care, tort reform. We all agree on state-run subsidies for pre-existing conditions. And increasing competition across state lines always improves the product and brings down the cost. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm at a time work because these are some of the same debates we had three years ago. And I don't know if Republicans like yourself have the votes to push that through. Renee Elmers, what is your suggestion? What is well, your solution? we need solutions. We need solutions. The American people are looking for solutions. And I will tell you, Obamacare simply is not going to do what would has been <coughs> promised. You know, the American people were, were given an option. They were given promises, and those promises have been broken. And we've seen this over and over again. The RSC plan that we rolled out last week, the American Health Care Reform Act, has all the essential pieces. You know, many of us, as Brad will tell you, those of us who have been in health care have known that reforms have needed to be put in place 
place. And, you know, that's the silver lining, I think, with Obamacare, is that it brought it to the national level for discussion. But we have to replace this with a with a patient-centered mm -hmm. plan. One, many of the ideas that, that Brad has um, discussed just moments ago are in this plan, and it is a solution for health care coverage, and it will get more individuals covered by health care. Do you think it gets off the ground, this idea? I think it does. When the American people are able to see this, you know, as Nancy Pelosi said, let's pass this so we can see what's in it. The American people didn't have any idea what was in Obamacare. We, on the other hand, at the RSC, we have a plan. The American people can look at it. This is a bill that can be amended by Democrats and Republicans to improve upon it. This is a starting okay. point, not an ending point. All right, let me get to the arbiter on our panel now, Dr. Mark Siegel. And Mark, good morning to you. Morning, Bill. Um, are, are you able to give us an idea of what's coming our way? Yes, Bill, and I want to say, by the way, this vote to defund Obamacare is a protest vote, which is at putting a spotlight on this, which is good, because the American people need to know what is coming their way. And the fact is, if the government was serious, as Congressman Winstrup said, about actually helping poor people or underserved people, they could have done it by hiring more doctors and building more clinics. This is an extension of insurance. And let me tell you what it's going to be like. With the state exchanges, you're going to see a restriction of choices. You're going to see panels of doctors that failed in the 1990s that won't allow you to keep your doctor, that won't allow you to keep your hospital in many cases. And you know what that means? Less access to care, not more. And for the 90 percent, for the 90 percent who already have insurance, Bill, 27 regulations and provisions are coming down the pike in 2014 that are going to change oh, that, that, the face of health care. Mark, quickly, I mean, are you saying the sky is going to fall on the first of October, <laughs> or is this something that works into the system gradually? I say, I mean, what do we expect here? I'm not chicken little. I don't think the sky is going to fall, but I think people are heading for a lot of confusion and not the health care they've been expecting or are used to. I'm worried about those that have employer-based insurance. 170 million people might see their system changing, not just the ones that are going to the exchanges. Right. Uh, Face uh, of health care is changing. I tell you, there, there is so much to talk about here. We're just scratching the surface, but Mark Siegel, thanks to you. And to the members of the Doctors' Caucus, Renee Elmers and Brad Wenstrup, thanks to you as well. North Carolina and Ohio, respectively. Appreciate it. October 1, next Tuesday. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Mark. Thank you, Bill. Well, we're going back.